Hi guys. It is another brutal midwinter day in mid-November here in the end times in my little cocoon here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a balmy 24 degrees and snowing here on a Sunday afternoon. It is November 20th, 2022. For the first time in my entire life, at age 63, I have witnessed a snowplow going past. I have never seen a snowplow uh, <laughs> until today. But anyway, uh, so of course what I am doing here uh, today is <coughs> planning my trip to Suriname looking at all of the videos and reading about the tropical, hot, sticky, bug-infested hellhole called Suriname, which compared to this hellhole sounds pretty good. So anyway, I want to send this, uh, I, I am sending this uh, video out to my good buddy, Fat Boy. I have never met Fat Boy uh, <laughs> in my entire life, uh, I, I thought this dude was dead. Two years ago, I, I thought this dude was dead and buried six feet under the ground, but I just got the email from him with the good news that uh, he is leaving his own snow-plagued hellhole in uh, Denver, Colorado, and he is going to move, I guess move back to the great state of Hawaii, and uh, <laughs> he, he told me he was thinking about, uh, you know, he's going in mid-February, and he was uh, going, thinking about extending me the invitation to come join him in Hawaii for a couple of months before he learned I was heading to Suriname, and obviously, uh, other folks, uh, se several folks, have, uh, you know, asked me, well, Hambone, why the hell don't you just go to Hawaii for a couple of months this winter? Oh, like, uh, you know, like everybody else. And uh, so anyway, guys, I have told this story before. Uh, at some point, I'm sure I have told uh, this story or at least parts of it. Uh, several years ago, but anyway, I'm going to uh, repeat myself and send this one out to Fat Boy and explain to him and anybody else why Hambone Littletail would rather roll around in a naked in a nest of scorpions and copperheads than ever set foot in the fucking shithole state of Hawaii again as long as I live, a cat does not jump on a hot stove twice, and, and, and that fucking hellhole was the hottest stove this uh, cat has ever jumped on since the day he was born. The five weeks that I spent in Hawaii, this would have been the spring of 1992. The spring of 1992, I spent five weeks in that hell hall. It remains the single worst five weeks of my life I have ever endured, hands down. Hands down, but of course now I am only in the second week of uh, here in the hellhole of uh, Ithaca, New York in, you know, in November and December, so maybe Hawaii will uh, have a running uh, at least for second place before this experience is all over. Uh, but anyway, good God, where to begin? I'm probably just going to talk here until the battery shuts down on this camera. I'll just sit here and blab. And uh, 
So anyway, my time in Hawaii, it was initiated back in, I guess it would have been the summer of 1991 when I was in a fairly fresh relationship with uh, this, this psycho bitch crazy woman who we will call Lulu. Uh, now Lulu, at that point, her daughter, Lulette, was two years old. So, uh, you know, I would spend, what I was doing is every, I was living in Eugene, Costa Rica, and for the third year in a row, I was planning to leave Eugene, Oregon, and go spend my winter in Costa Rica. This is what I did. I spent five winters in a row in Costa Rica. This would have been my third one. And uh, <laughs> so my plan was to leave on November 1st, 1991, and come back to Eugene, Oregon in the middle of April for the third time. Uh, that was my plan, you know, spending my summers in Eugene, Oregon, and my winters in, uh, in Costa Rica. So, of course, Lulu wanted to come with me to Costa Rica. But she had a goddamn two-year-old child with her, and, and I said, darling, I would absolutely love you to come join me in Costa Rica for the winter. Uh, but it, it, it just ain't gonna happen with a two-year-old, it ain't gonna happen. So uh, I blew the whistle on it, and maybe for revenge, what Lulu did, she said, well, fuck you. If you're going to Costa Rica without me, uh, I am heading to Maui for the, uh, for the winter. And uh, so that was the line we drew in the sand. So she made her plans to head to Maui and I made my plans to go to Costa Rica, so uh, we parted company on November 1st, and she was heading over, I guess she was managing, as I recall, a little motel over this in, uh, in Maui called the Banana Bungalow. So she went over there with her kid to manage the uh, banana bungalows in Maui, and I headed off to Costa Rica. So anyway, uh, of course, when I was down there, uh, you know, I was mooning over my, my, my girlfriend, uh, wishing to hell that I had my girlfriend with me. And so, of course, this was, this was before 1992 in Costa Rica, I can't remember if you could even get an email through. It was very hard to communicate from Costa Rica uh, in, in uh, 91 and 92, but somehow we managed to communicate with each other. Uh, and the plan was that I was going to leave Costa Rica early and I was going to come join her in Maui on around the 1st of March. And we were going to spend three months, March, April, and May, we were going to spend in, uh, in Maui. Uh, and then we were going to return together for the summer uh, back to Eugene. Uh, Eugene, Oregon. So that was the plan. So I remember when I made this plan. So I was mostly hanging out with this uh, with this ragtag bunch of hippies. We were kind of living in a loose knit community on the beach in this little town called uh, Montezuma, Costa Rica. Uh, so we were hanging out on the beach in Montezuma, Costa Rica, and I remember to this day when I w announced to this group of hippies uh, that I was, you know, I was going to be leave, pulling up stakes early 
and uh, I was actually had my truck with me driving back uh, to the States, shipping my truck over to Hawaii. I was going to ship my truck over to Hawaii, meet up with my girlfriend and live in Maui. And I still remember the chilly reception I got to this from several of the people there who had lived in Hawaii. You know, these were hippies on a beach in Costa Rica. It's not surprising that most of them had already done the Hawaii thing. And, and they were telling me, dude, don't do it you are going to be miserable in Hawaii. Don't leave this paradise you have in Costa Rica thinking you're going to go over there to fucking Hawaii and improve on this. Now, you know, and, and, and looking back, uh, I honestly don't know what it was they were, were I, I honestly don't know if their remarks to me had more to do with Hawaii, or whether it had more to do with my fire engine red uh, aura. Uh, I think now it probably had more to do with my personality than uh, it, it did with, with, with actually Hawaii. But what they were telling me in 1992 that Hawaii had already been ruined, and that, uh, you know, like, well, of course, Costa Rica has now been ruined, but they said, you know, that ship has sailed, which is why we are in Costa Rica enjoying it while we still can before this paradise gets ruined. So that's the way they were couching it, is just that I would get there and be horrified by, you know, how it had already been ruined uh, over there, and that Costa Rica had a few more years left in it, and which was right. I was there at Costa Rica at the very end of the party. And, uh, but now I'm beginning to think it probably had as much or more to do uh, with my personality, that they just understood that my fire engine red aura was going to bump up against all those fucking little pool table green bliss ninnies over there in Maui. And you all know what happens when red bumps into green. It makes this diarrhea brown aura hanging over everything. And, uh, but anyway... I let my little brain override my big brain. I, uh, <laughs> I cut my, uh, my time down in paradise and headed back to the States, drove back to the fucking United States, and uh, put my truck on a, on a boat. Um... Uh, which actually went out of Seattle, Washington. I thought it would go out of L.A. It ended up that I had to drive all the fucking way to Seattle, Washington to ship my truck to, uh, to Hawaii. And uh, so I did all, I go all the fucking way to Seattle, I'll go through all of that hassle, put my goddamn truck uh, on, the, on the cargo ship, uh, heading to Hawaii, and it was going to take eight days for my truck <clears throat> to get there. And I paid $800 to ship my truck uh, over there to Hawaii, but as my girlfriend and I talked about it, you know, the plan was I was going to pay $800 to ship my truck over there, but we were going to sell the truck in Hawaii, it was a Toyota Tacoma, and, and that, you know, that I was going to go over there and in a heartbeat be able to sell this Toyota Tacoma for a hell of a lot more, uh, you know, than, than it would cost to get a 
Toyota Tacoma on the mainland. Obviously, uh, the, 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 I could just name my price. So I said, you know, that $800 will easily be paid for. We, we can uh, sell the truck in Hawaii before we leave, come back uh, and just buy a new truck uh, when uh, I, I get back to the U.S. and pay for my entire trip. I honestly believe this. So I put my fucking truck uh, on a cargo ship and uh, then I got on the plane and uh, flew to Hawaii. Now, obviously, you fly into Honolulu. And then uh, I had to take some little puddle hopper to uh, Maui. And uh, it was going and, and wait, you know, rent a car and wait for eight days uh, for my truck to get there. And so that was my basic plan. So I get on the goddamn plane, I leave my truck off uh, at, at, the, at, at the shipping yard, I hop on a goddamn plane, fly off, and, and, and I will never forget this moment till the day I die. So what happened is we come in and we land uh, in Hawaii. And I'm telling you guys, the very second, the second that the wheels of the airplane hit the runway, I knew I had made, just made the single biggest fuck up of my entire life since the day I was born. I had the universe. The universe did not whisper to me. The universe hit me upside the head with a two by four and said, you stupid motherfucker. You clueless fucking moron. What the fuck have you done? It was, it was I mean, absolutely bizarre. I have never felt, I, I, I mean, we've all had these feelings, but uh, you usually have a feeling like this, you, you know, when you're in downtown Tegucigalpa, Honduras, or Managua, Nicaragua, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I think I was probably the only person on the plane feeling like that I had just seriously fucked up, and I went, as we were taxiing, down the runway, I went into a complete panic attack. I was in an absolute panic attack by the time the, uh, that, 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 they were uh, unloading us off the fucking plane. You know, this was way before the, the day of cell phones. And, and, and uh, I, I mean, it, it, I don't know if you've ever had a panic attack. But I was having a full-blown panic attack in the Honolulu airport without even going to get my luggage. I mean, I ran as fast as I could to a payphone and uh, called the shipping company, uh, you know, with my truck telling them, do not put that fucking truck on that ship. Even if I had to pay the 800 fucking dollars, I didn't care. So this very nice woman comes on the phone and, and I said, darling, I said, please tell me you have not put my truck on that boat. And she said, sir, if you had called two hours ago, we could have pulled your truck off of that boat and just stored it here. She said, you're two hours late. Your truck is on the way to Hawaii. It will be there in eight days. And it was like someone telling me Sancho Panza uh, had been hit by a car. Uh, it, it's just like, you know, it, it was hearing that news that my fucking truck was on the way there. I, I just said, this does not 
bode well for me. And that was the understatement of the year. So, uh, good God, I, you know, I mean, I, I could sit here and write a fucking novel about what I endured for the next five weeks in, uh, in, in, in that hellhole. It was th those five weeks from approximately March 1st through early April were hands down the single most horrible five weeks of my entire life. And, and, and you know, you got to remember, guys, uh, I traveled all through Central America during the, uh, you know, during the early 1990s with all of these goddamn civil wars and all of this shit down there in Nicaragua and Guatemala and Honduras and all of this shit. Uh, you know, uh, I, I would any day take a civil war in Guatemala uh, over uh, over uh, that time in, in, in Hawaii. Now, it might have had something to do with the fact that the entire state, the state government of Hawaii was shut down. They were on strike. It was pretty much anarchy. In, uh, in, in the state of Hawaii. There was no state government uh, over there, uh, you, you know. Uh, so, I mean, it was the Wild West, and, and these uh, damn Hawaiians uh, knew, knew full well. And I, you know, being a, a honky, they, they call us Howleys. So I was a male... Howley, uh, traveling uh, in, uh, in Hawaii, and I have never in my entire life felt so, I, I mean, just physically in danger of getting myself beaten to death, which three times it happened over the five weeks I was there, three different times these these fucking uh, Hawaiian dudes and and they're nothing you know every goddamn one of them looks like a fucking sumo wrestler these are some mean nasty motherfuckers these native Hawaiians and uh, they wanted they did not take kindly to this uh, skinny little howley uh, driving around in his fancy truck uh, uh, over there on their island. It was obviously I was the one who kidnapped their queen. Uh, it, 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 it was me. Uh, Hambone Littletail uh, was the one who kid, kidnapped their queen three different times. Uh, I came within inches of getting my ass beat to a bloody pulp by these guys all three times. I had my skinny little howly ass saved by, uh, by Hawaiian women. Uh, all three went down uh, the same way where these fucking Hawaiian dudes uh, took one look at me and decided, uh, y y you know, that, that I was a fucking, j just a fucking rat uh, that needed to be stomped. And they were this far away from doing it, and their girlfriends intervened. Every, every time. Three for three. I had my howly ass saved by their girlfriends. Uh, you know, calming them down and, and saying, let the motherfucker pack up his shit and get out of here. And then they would say, you got, you know, you have five minutes to pack up your shit, get in that truck, and get the fuck out of here uh, before my boyfriend fucking pounds your ass into the ground. Get the fuck off this beach. Get off this island. Don't you ever fucking set foot here again. 
it 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 was it, it was un fucking believable. The uh, just just this fucking pall of violence that hung over that whole town, and uh, so anyway, we started out uh, in Maui. And, uh, you, you know, where my girlfriend was absolutely loving uh, Maui. She was absolutely in heaven, and uh, she probably still hasn't forgiven me for fucking that up. Well, I, it, I come to find out that one of the reasons that she was having such a great time in Maui is she was fucking this dude over there. You know? <laughs> Here, here I was all heartbroken for this bitch, and, and uh, so, uh, so I leave Costa Rica and, and go over there to be back with her, and, and it soon gets reported to me, uh, you know, by people uh, who knew her, uh, like, dude, you're being played by a fucking fool. She's fucking this dude over here. You're a fucking patsy. So that was the end of Maui. So I told her, uh, I, I said, uh, you know, we were still, I was waiting for my truck. Uh, I, I said, darling, uh, I, I said, you have got to, I, I said, it's your choice. You can either stay over here in Maui, fucking this dude, and, and uh, living your little dream life over in the uh, over in banana bungalows. And I don't blame you if, if you make the choice. I said I'm getting the fuck out of here when my truck gets here to uh, to Honolulu. So that was my first eight days, and uh, then. Uh, so my truck got back, so I said, what well, I'm, so we decided, we had, you know, we had no desire to live in Honolulu, but we both heard all these good things about the island of Kauai. So, uh, you know, she had to put in her notice, and so, her 14-day notice and stuff. All right, little doggy, little wiggle worm. So, uh, so, I go back. I get the fucking truck, and then I have to ship it from fucking Honolulu. Uh, I don't even know what it is. Honolulu on Oahu. I think it's on Oahu. So uh, that was it for Maui. So then I went and got my truck, and we got on a fucking boat, and uh, however much that fucking cost me. So now I was over there on Kauai with my uh, with my damn truck uh, waiting for her to, you know to tie up her business in Maui you know get a few more blow jobs in with that fucking uh, dude uh, it wasn't a Hawaiian guy she it was a, it was a howley she was fucking over there uh, ironically enough so uh, anyway uh, I'm over there and trying to find fucking housing on Kauai. I was trying to find, you know, a place to live, to rent from, uh, you know, like early March till the end of May, and uh, having absolutely no fucking luck. So it was basically that we were just going to be camping on the beach. And so where where I ended up, literally ended up in, uh, in Puff the Magic Dragon's Cave up there in Honolulu. Uh, you know, if you know that song, that Peter, Paul, and Mary song, Puff the Magic Dragon, I literally in Puff the Magic Dragon's Cave is where I ended up uh, you know, setting up camp outside of the cave, living on the beach, and now I did have an experience there, one of the strangest experiences of my entire life. I've also told that story, but that's another rant for another day. Unbelievably, unbelievably bizarre sh shit went down there and puffed the Magic Dragon's Cave. But anyway, uh, while I was waiting for her to get there, I just went in my uh, my uh, panic attack 
return, but I, I just went into just this rock bottom, black hole, suicidal clinical depression. I was living in this fucking youth hostel uh, over there in Kauai and just, uh, just went in to an absolute bottomless pit depression and and my whole right arm, like it's doing like right now, as a matter of fact, uh, Alistair, if you're listening to this, I really fucked up my arm on those goddamn rocks. But I remember my whole right arm was, was just, uh, I, I mean, I was in excruciating pain. And uh, going just, you know, getting massages and all of this shit. I remember calling my mother uh, in Atlanta to send me some fucking pain pills. Uh, of course, the pain was completely psychosomatic. And uh, good fucking God. And uh, I, I hadn't even had one of these encounters with one of these Hawaiians yet. So it was, uh, so my girlfriend finally gets to Kauai and uh, we're living in a fucking tent uh, on, uh, on the beach in, uh, in, uh, in Hanalei. And so what it was because the state government was shut down is that all of the state parks were just no man's land. You could camp as long as you wanted to there for free. There were no cops, no rangers, no nothing. So you can imagine the fucking free-for-all. It was totally free. Uh, everything, as I say, it was pure anarchy. Uh, you could just set up camp and live on the beach. So I proceeded to do that, and I guess it was maybe, I'm guessing, the third or fourth day after my girlfriend uh, came and joined me, you know, I moved out of the youth hostel. We moved up there to Honolulu, set up camp, and I think it was probably three or four days there. And we were cooking. We were just starting to make dinner when uh, the first time, and, and I had my girlfriend and her daughter there. It was the three of us. And we were sitting there minding our own fucking business, uh, cooking dinner uh, over the fire. And, and, and this motherfucker, uh, did this kid, this drunk ass motherfucker just came out of nowhere starting shit with us, telling us that, uh, you, know, pack, you know, get the fuck out of here, uh, you don't belong here, go back uh, to fucking Babylon, I think. The, they, they call the mainland Babylon. They, you know, get your fucking howly ass out of here, off of our beach. Don't you ever fucking come back here, you fucking howly scumbag. And, uh, and my girlfriend was fucking freaking out, thinking I was getting ready to get killed. And so she went over there and talked to his girlfriend about what was going on. And that dude's girlfriend came over and got him calmed down, but, uh, you know, she told my girlfriend, uh, girlfriend, you need to, uh, you, you need to pack up your shit, and, and you guys need to get the fuck out of here, and, uh, don't, don't make this mistake again. Uh, you get a pass this time. So we packed up our shit. I guess we, I don't even remember. I guess we went back to the youth hostel. So then, uh, I, I, was, I was already, so I had been there now uh, about, uh, about two and a half, three weeks. I guess I had been there just, just living in hell. And somehow, we decided to give whatever the island that Honolulu sits on, I think Oahu, she had heard some fucking rumor about some fucking uh, place up there uh, where, you know, on that island that it wasn't quite so bad for the Howleys. 
So uh, I, I, I said, darling, uh, I, I said, I'm, I, I'm giving this one more fucking chance. Uh, strike one was Maui. Strike two is Kauai. Strike three is, I'm assuming, I'm going to call it Oahu. Uh, I, I, I said, as soon as some fucking shit goes down in Oahu, we're fucking out of here. Um, uh, so, uh, so we're going over there, and uh, I'm going to sell this fucking truck. And uh, I'm going to get the truck up for sale. And uh, as soon as I find a buyer for this fucking truck, we're out of here. So uh, we go over to uh, Oahu, not to Honolulu. We were on the other end of the island, which isn't that far. And uh, how many nights was it before, gee, guess what? Been through this fucking movie before. And uh, for the second time in, in, in uh, about a week, same shit went down. Hallie, get your shit. Get the fuck uh, off of this beach. Get the fuck off of this island before I pound your fucking Hallie face into the ground. And uh, so then we were completely fucked. And uh, I, I, I just said to hell with this. And, and so we go, we're looking for a place to live. The only, the, the only option for her, because I was worried about her getting raped, she was starting to worry about her two-year-old child, you know, uh, being in danger. And uh, I was, it, and, and we were both worried about her getting fucking raped and, and me getting killed. And so what we did it is we uh, we found a battered women's shelter. So she and her kid moved in to a battered women's and children's shelter. I'm sure the uh, incidents of domestic violence. I'm taking a wild guess in Hawaii that I uh, never seen such a bunch of uh, alcoholic, drunk, violent fuckers in my entire fucking life. And uh, so <clears throat> every night, uh, you know, as soon as the sun started to go down, I would take Lulu and Lulette back to the fucking women's shelter, the battered women's shelter. I wasn't allowed to, uh, you know, to set foot in the place. It, it was real ironic that, uh, th that this chick's boyfriend w was dropping her off at a battered women's and children's shelter. Uh, but I was not invited to the fucking battered women's and children's shelter, so I was on my own. So, uh, I, so then, so... Get that. So then I'm, you know, I, I go to sell my truck and I'm going, you know, I'm driving into Honolulu and, uh, you know, talking to car dealers and, uh, and, and, and mechanics and, you know, Toyota mechanics and car dealers. I had this beautiful Toyota truck and was telling them about my plans and they were all bursting out laughing at me like saying, you dumb fucking Howley. You should have researched this a little bit more, and you would have found that, that you cannot sell a truck in the state of Hawaii for one half the price you could sell the same truck in California. You know, they were telling me, uh, call it a $5,000 truck. Uh, I think I got an offer, as I recall... I was offered $1,700 for this $5,000. I, I was thinking I was going to sell it for $8,000. Take about a week to sell my $5,000 truck for $8,000. Well, uh, after about a week, uh, my best offer was $1,700. So guess what? Time to put the fucking truck back on uh, back on the fucking boat. Uh, spend another eight hundred dollars, uh, sixteen hundred dollars 
uh, you know, to ship that fucking truck to Hawaii uh, there and back, and uh, and uh, plus the smaller charges in between the islands. So I, I probably spent two thousand fucking dollars on moving that goddamn gas sucking truck around, and, and of course. A, what happens probably the third or fourth night at the battered women's shelter uh, while I was waiting around for the cargo ship to load. In the last few days, I had my truck before I, I loaded it. Uh, here we go again uh, about getting my fucking ass killed. Uh, my crime that night was... You know, I dropped Lulu off at the shelter and went and had dinner. So by the time I got to the campground, uh, it was a little bit, it was already after dark. And so when I came into the campground, my headlights went across the wall of a tent where this Hawaiian dude and his girlfriend were staying and he did not like my headlights illuminating his tent when I was coming up to my campsite. So uh, that just about got me killed. And uh, he came storming out of the tent, uh, ready to fucking kill me. And uh, once again, uh, I had my ass fucking saved by this Hawaiian woman as I was packing up my fucking tent after dark, throwing my shit back of the truck. So I headed to a goddamn motel, this cheap-ass uh, flea bag hotel in downtown Honolulu, and that was actually all right. Uh, you know, finally got my truck back on the thing, and then, of course, it was eight days for the fucking truck to uh, go back to fucking Seattle. So the choice was spend eight days in Seattle, Washington, uh, or eight days in fucking Honolulu, and by that time he said, fuck it. So uh, we just stayed at this uh, flea bag hotel in, uh, in downtown uh, Honolulu drinking Mai Tais. You ever had these fucking Mai Tais? I mean, we just went on an eight-day drunk uh, slugging Mai Tais in the fucking uh, hotel bar is how we passed eight days. We were like right across the street from the zoo, and, and you could hear the lions roaring every morning. Uh, We'd be lying there with the fucking lions and the tigers roaring at us across the street. And would be lying there with a fucking hangover telling Lulu, you know, th th this is just so fucking uh, appropriate that we're sitting here uh, listening to the fucking hungry lions roar. Uh, I just wanted it. I had never... Uh, been so glad to get out of a fucking place in my entire life when that goddamn uh, plane, when that fucking airplane <laughs> rolled down that runway in Hawaii and I felt myself flying back to Babylon. Uh, I, I said, good fucking God, don't you ever, ever, ever come back to this fucking shithole again. I mean, it was the biggest sigh of relief. I mean, I felt a 200-pound uh, weight lifting off my shoulders, uh, winging it back to fucking Babylon that I would take my goddamn chances. And uh, anyway, that was 30 years ago. 30 years ago that I... <laughs> And uh, I have never looked back. I have had several uh, invitations to go to Hawaii. Uh, you know, it ended up being the, the, the woman, that, you know, my best friend in the world, you know, my Trump tard friend. Uh, she lived in Maui for a couple of years, absolutely loved Maui. I mean, uh, she's always wanted to go back to Maui, 
every one of my friends who has ever been to Hawaii has absolutely loved it. I have never met one other person who had a bad time in Hawaii. It was, uh, I honestly don't know if I'm, if I'm having some flashback to a past life where I was a slave on a sugar cane plantation or, or what the fuck it was. But as I told Fat Boy today that uh, I guess we shall never meet. Uh, I've known this man for how many years and uh, looks like he and I will never meet for whatever reason the universe has spoken. But I honestly think it's a good, the fat boy's lived there. He's, he's also lived in Hawaii. So this is, uh, he knows how much he loves it. But uh, brother, you will never see me in the state of Hawaii. They say never say never. I am saying never. You will never see Hambone Little Tail set foot in that fucking shithole. The fact that I made it out alive is amazing enough. And for me to go back to Hawaii, yeah, right. I will take my chances here in the 24 degree uh, snowy hill of uh, Ithaca, New York for the next five weeks before I'll ever go back to that fucking hell hole. And you can take that to the bank. Uh, anyway, I hope this explains to anyone wondering why the little dog and I are not going to Hawaii. Get out there and go to Hawaii while you still can, but uh, take a loaded 38 with you if you do go. Some motherfuckers over there, and uh, let them have their country back. I, yeah, I'm totally with them. Give them their fucking country back. I'm 100% in support. Give those motherfuckers their country back. Bye, guys.